applications for digital transformation. I take uh, organization from the lens of how actually they can uh, be they, they can transform themselves. Apart from that, I have a key interest into analytics, and uh, mostly my area is focused upon the business analytics. So today, uh, I will be showcasing one project that I did under the marketing analytics pack that you will find on Salesforce Hub. So there are uh, two packs. One is social media analytics that I recently uh, made and I recently shared, and this is the marketing analytics pack. So uh, one of the workshop that will be present on the Salesforce Hub YouTube channel that will be on uh, RFM analysis. So my prior workshop was on RFM analysis where I explained upon the recency, frequency, and the monetary analysis. Apart from that, today I will extend one arm of that into uh, the next project that is the customer lifetime value prediction. So um, I will uh, I will just explain the flow of the session, how it will go. So first, we will be starting with the presentation. I will be explaining the concept as why I am talking about customer lifetime value and how, why it is relevant. Then we will proceed to the Salesforce Hub platform, and I will show that how actually the platform have a project that can help you to implement this. um this project and this uh, whole prediction of your customers and you can also use that platform to make your own dashboard and understand your customers in wherever organizations you want to so uh, at the end i will uh, uh, i i will be showing you uh, practically how the project will flow but i'll start with the presentation of mine that i have prepared a small slide to make you actually understand that why we are talking about customer lifetime value so just me just confirm if my ppt is visible i'm just sharing my screen just a moment okay so please just confirm if you can see my screen yes yes we can okay thank you so much so let me just start with the slide show yeah it will take a while so yeah i i hope the screen is visible is visible right yeah yes yes yeah. so we'll proceed talking about that what is customer lifetime value first let's understand the metric of customer lifetime value so this is a one of the most relevant metric that we see when we talk about customer analytics or we talk about marketing analytics so uh, when i take business analytics into one lens there are three main branches of an organization one is the finance one is the marketing and the one is the operations so actually the main branches or the main pillars of organization stand with these three main elements so when i talk about customers every organization main focus is to understand their customers to identify the behavior of their customers to know what their customers want and to have a retention of their customers in the previous workshop when i explained the rfm analysis when we talk about the recency frequency and monetary analysis we were talking about ki how i am you know able to actually see what are my loyal customers who are my more you know who are my customers who are not making that much contribution to my organization and they are on the verge of retention in that workshop i talk about the customer retention now in this workshop i will be talking about the customer lifetime value and other metrics that is related with the customers identifying their uh, you know their inherent traits and characteristics so what is customer lifetime value customer lifetime value is generally defined as the present value of all future profits obtained from a customer over his or her life of relationship with the firm so as the name or as the uh, you know as when i am saying customer lifetime value it suggests that we are now interested to identify that what a customer is likely to contribute into a, into my organization when i am talking about acquiring a customer so a perfect example when i explain a customer lifetime value is the apple ecosystem so from the lens of apple organization if you see the main challenge what the apple have is to convert a non apple user customer into a apple user customer once the customer get into the ecosystem of apple once i am able to you know start using iphone or i am able to start using airpods or i am using i am able to start using any other service that is given by apple the my probability to actually come into the whole ecosystem of apple is very likely high 
so if i have a iphone i'm more likely to buy a mac or a ipad or a or a airpod or a let's say you know some any other services that is given by apple they have their own icloud they give their own services exclusively for their customers the main for any organization if i am a customer if i am not aware of any organization the main part is to actually convert once one transaction and make me enter into that organization and then they can actually predict that how my lifetime value is going to contribute into the organization so it is very similar to the discounted cash flow approach used in finance so when we talk about clv we typically define an estimate at an individual level or a customer or a segment level why i am interested into this because the most important part when i am you know in an organization we see is the fact that how much actually i should invest into acquiring a customer and if let's say if i invest something how much the customer is going to give to me so one transaction of a customer does not define the the probability of the value the customer can input to an organization so if i go into a store and i buy one thing that is just a initial transaction the first transaction or the first exposure to that service or that organization with me and to predict that how much i can contribute is really very important and very relevant for organization on their dashboard to actually understand their customers to identify who are the more profitable customers and to acquire them and to make them into and convert them into a loyal ecosystem so when i talk about clv there are two other metrics that i am interested to here talk about one is the customer churn and another is the customer acquisition cost when i talk about churn it was first introduced on the in the in the reference of you know bank services and the telecom services so first it was introduced on in the reference of telecom services in india we have majorly three service providers so we have vodafone idea we have airtel and we have jio so we don't have that much i would say that much competition but in if, imagine that you have uh, you know when the telecom services started we used to have 12 service providers and the battle between the service providers to actually do not let the customer churn was really high so for me if i am a user of vodafone idea and you know i if i switch from vodafone idea to any other telecom service provider that's the churning rate of a customer when a customer discontinue a subscription or a service from an organization and switch from one service provider to other service provider so that is something very very important metric for a organization because they want to check periodically that what is the rate of my customer churn why they are switching to other services why they are netflix if you see so in the domain of content providers or in the domain of entertainment providers you can see that you know there are netflix there is amazon there is you know hotstar there is a lot of competitors in that in that zone so for netflix to actually see that what is the churning rate of their customer is very important another important metric is customer acquisition cost as i said that how much i need to invest to acquire one unique customer because once the customer enter into my ecosystem once the customer started interacting with my organization then the whole customer relationship management will flow then that is the later part because that way i would actually make aware that i exist for my customer similar the example with the apple when i talk about apple once i get the iphone then you know the probability of me getting no about a mac or any other services offered by apple is really high as compared when i'm totally unaware of the fact that apple provide a service so the customer acquisition cost is very important when i design any campaign or any customer centric uh, you know approach where i want my customers to join or to start my services or to get into my uh, subscription or my product so the customer acquisition cost is the overall cost associated to acquire a new customer including all the costs that have made to acquire the customer and turn into lead understand it is the cost for a new customer not for the existing customer we are when we calculate the customer acquisition cost we are always targeted for the new customer right so this is something that two of the most important uh, relevant metrics that we talk about so when we prepare a customer centric bo a dashboard or when an organization have a dashboard where they can see that how their customers are behaving they have all these metrics to look upon they have the churning rate they have the retention rate they have they need to know what are the acquisition costs they are bearing they want to know what are the customer lifetime values of their uh, segment of customers so whenever you call a zomato whenever you call a amazon services whenever you are not satisfied with their some product or services how actually they identify that 
which customer is you know a defaulter which customer is the loyal one which customer they need to really retain and focus upon which customer is on the verge of you know switching if they don't provide that kind of service these kind of dashboard help you understand your customer is in much more in in depth way so this is uh, you know to explain much more in detail i took a one example so here you are seeing a, a rough a camouflage idea about how a situation where i am investing into facebook and google ads to acquire a customer i am i am you know running a campaign in an organization and i want to acquire a customer i, I want to calculate my customer acquisition cost so if you see the spend in the january you see that the facebook in the facebook ad i am spending let's say $5000 right and in the for the google ads i am spending $2500 and this is the paid revenue that i'm getting out of this much investment this is the paid row as that is simply this the paid revenue divided by the spend and this is the paid purchases i'm getting out of it so 180 purchases i'm getting out of when i'm investing total amount of 7500 in january and this is something that is the customer acquisition cost so this is something i'm paying for acquiring customers from facebook so i'm paying 58.8 dollars to acquire customers from new customers from facebook right and from the google it is 26.3 dollars and in total it is 41.7 dollars so if you see the most important uh, decision that organization once in a while need to make is should i increase my investment into google ads and decrease my investment into facebook ad because i'm seeing here the conversion is high and most probably you know i'm getting most leads or most conversion out of google ads so what generally organization is uh, suggest and they took a decision where they increase the investment into google ads and you know so this is one situation i am just telling out hypothetically i am just choosing two platforms there might be more than two platforms and i am choosing google ads over facebook ad and if you see i am increasing the uh, expend my my investment into google ads so here in the month of february i invested 5000 uh as compared to january double it and in the march i'm i'm investing 7500 so if you see my my google ad investment is going up and if you see the purchases if i only look upon the purchases it is going high so the conversion is high so i might see that okay i'm 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 doing the right thing and i'm taking the right decision but the point here is that if i don't look the customer acquisition cost where it defined that actually i'm started making more investment into acquiring the customer so if you see the customer acquisition cost is also going up so prior in january when i was actually investing 41.7 dollars into acquiring a customer now i am investing 55.55 dollars in march when i started investing more into google ads why this happened actually this is not a good thing for me i'm i'm losing money more than i should because previously i was not investing that much into acquiring a customer but now i am investing more rather i am see if i only see the conversion i only see the you know paid purchases i might be happy that okay to, uh, my my paid purchases are increasing but actually it is costing me more because now i am paying more to acquire my customer so why it is happening so this is happening so to explain that the previous example this is happening because of the fact just see the situation so might possible in the top of the funnel i am using the facebook ad and in the bottom of the conversion i am using the google ads so what i am here doing is that i am closing the mouth or closing the entering of the funnel and i am increasing the width here so that is the reason i am paying more for my acquiring the customer and that is the reason the customer who were falling from the top of the funnel and going down and getting converted now what is happening is that i have closed and have started narrowing down this opening of the funnel and i'm only trying to convert here and that is the reason i'm 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 actually costing myself to actually convert a customer and actually acquire a customer so this is one example that why we see these metrics why we see customer acquisition cost why we see clv now then the second part i will explain one interesting way that how customer acquisition cost and how customer lifetime value correlate so let's say that you know what is the my question is what is the highest customer acquisition cost that i can bear to actually make money out of my customers the answer will be only analyzed when i know my customer lifetime value so let's say that you know a total gross profit that we expect to make from a lifetime purchases of average customer is the lifetime value and let's say our average customer spends 185 dollars on an order 
so and my gross profit margin is 65% so what will be the gross profit on my first order that is the first transaction of that customer with my you know service or product that will be 65% of $185 and that is $120 now the question comes should i invest $150 customer acquisition cost to actually retain or actually acquire this customer but i cannot decide it because this is something i might not be able to take a right decision until unless i know what is the customer lifetime value so let's look at the data now let's say that looking back historically at 3000 customers our average customer over their lifetime spends purchases 2.6 times so that means that so our customer lifetime revenue is 2.6 times of 185 dollars that gives me 481 dollars and now if i say that you know the average customer lifetime value will be 65 percent of 481 dollars that will give me 313 dollars now if i say that should i invest 150 dollars to acquire this customer my answer would be yes because now i know that if i invest 150 dollars to acquire a new customer this customer is going to give me $313 in their lifetime you know spend and that is the answer is absolutely yes i should go for it so this metric is really very important when actually we choose the platform also in what in which platform i am focusing upon should i go with the google ads should i go with the facebook it is very important to look into the fact that how much the customer is 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 contributing into the organization it also help into actually proceed the organization into product innovation and it, into new product development because once the customer engage yourself with their lifetime interaction you may be able to understand that what the customer is looking for and how your upcoming products or services should be made to actually make them more susceptible to your to your services so how machine learning helps into calculating clv and why we actually i i prepared this project particularly for the people who want to use a very advanced predicting mechanism to calculate the customer lifetime value so we have in machine learning a gamma gamma sum model from the lifetime packages and that's the great part of python because uh, in python you get a lot of libraries a lot of packages that are inbuilt and that actually help you to uh, perform advanced level of prediction and very accurate as well so we use this model for predicting how much average profit we can earn for each customer it gives us the expected average profit for each customer after modeling the average profit for the mass so the customer's monetary value the sum of the customer's transaction amounts will be randomly distributed over the average of its transaction value so the average transaction value can charge in periods between the customer but it's not changing for a customer right it may change in periods but it will not changing for a customer so how this actually operates so the the wider uh, in in the wider umbrella the the model the gamma gamma model operate on a very simple we also you know we also discuss this into the supply chain management where we have weighted average we have uh, you know mcdm techniques when we provide weight and we provide functional values to each and every attribute where we want to predict something so you know here the e refers to the expected value and here m refers to the expected value of transaction that is the average profit mx is so so the function actually actually have a dependence upon the fact that you know what is the frequency of each customer mx refers to the monetary of each customer and what expected value of transaction or the expected average profit we can get out of a customer and p q y come across the gamma distribution and that help you actually distribute your weighted a uh, prediction or average that you want to predict from a customer so the model actually give you the capability to analyze and to predict the lifetime value of a customer or a segment hari can you review this equation again yes sir uh, sorry so this is something that you know this so let's say you know when we say f or x is the function of y right when we say that x depend on uh, x depend on y so what are the parameters that we are here interested to evaluate how we are actually predicting so we are keeping the dependent variables and the independent variables so the dependent variables here are that we are dependent on the fact what are the frequency of our customers how what is the monetary value of each customer that is uh, the customer is contributing 
and what is the expected so what we are predicting out of it is what is the expected value of transaction or the expected average profit that a customer can give me why i have not assigned a weighted average here so uh, when you see in other techniques or what we do is we assign a weight weight to a uh, to you know a, 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 a value so let's say i see maximum weightage should be gone to the frequency and maximum weightage should be gone to the monetary but here what is the advantage with the gamma distribution here is that with the pqy with, with the pqy and distribution it automatically predict that what is the real time weight should be you know given to each and every attribute and what will be the most effective way of getting the average profit or average lifetime value of the customers so this is something that is uh, the capability of the package and the model that it provides you a very flexible a very real time weighting of the uh, functions of frequency and monetary value so i think um, I, i can proceed to vivek yeah so basically you are getting these parameters from some gamma probability distribution huh? yes yes so we are making the prediction or we can say in other words we are making the probability of a person who is having a x ray frequency and mx monetary value what will be the average lifetime value of that customers so we are making that prediction here so there is some derivation behind this formula right as you know yes. right so okay yes. fine yeah that's good good thank you so uh, moving forward if i go to the selstrat platform this is the snapshot of the result that i took so just let me know if you are able to see my uh, selstrat page is it visible yes yes so all of you are welcome to sign up for selstrat hub where this project is provided as part of the marketing analytics uh, project pack uh, so you can uh, just click on sign up and raise a sign up request and our backend team will approve your request and your free tier account will be created and after that you can check out the marketing analytics pack below the your expansion pack so you will be able to get to this project and the code along with the run time on selstrat hub If you have any questions about how to sign up for Selstrat Hub, uh, you can ask now. Just give me a moment. I I think it will take a while to actually start again. Just a moment. So this platform is an integrated AI platform. It has a. one uh, fifty plus projects apis as well as a runtime environment using jupiter lab okay yeah so meanwhile if anyone have a question i'm just uh, i'm just starting this page it will take a moment it's showing pending it will just start in a moment so i'll just show you how the data set should look like when you want to actually and what kind of data set you need to be available to actually do if you are able to see my screen this is the data set that we are taking so very uh, important metrics is the you know the quantity the invoice date the unit price and the customer id right so these are the metrics that should be there should be present with your data set the country column is not uh, that much relevant you can skip that but apart from that these uh, you know these items should be there should be available for with you to actually start with the prediction and i think with the rfm analysis as well you will require the similar kind of data set so if you really interested into performing that and you want to prepare a dashboard for your organization you can use this data set for multiple so yes now i am i think ready with this yeah as you can see there are a lot of analysis that are present into the marketing pack and these are all, all projects are actually focused upon to make you understand about your customers there are different kind of analysis present so rfm will also be there into the pack so you can actually if you are interested into performing the rfm analysis you can also 
go forward with that so when i start with this you know platform so with the project so you need to import the essential the required libraries that are important in the first go you just make sure the most important part here is that once you are able to read your data set that is the next step that you are reading your data set once you are able to read your data set and if anyone is performing simultaneously so if you are able to read your data set that will be a go and i think apart from that there will be no glitch that will be there into the project so uh, if you are able to read it then i think it is going to work smoothly it will take some time although i think uh, my bandwidth is showing some issue so one thing i just do i just stop my video yeah so yeah first you need to import your libraries and then once it is imported then you have to just read your data the next step after reading your data the next step will be actually to look upon have a glimpse of your data that what your data look like i don't know why it is not okay Okay. that is taking a while so i am also trying to run it honey uh, so i am starting my workspace i'll try to run it yes, is it sir. a big file online retail.csv is it a big file no it's not a big file it was actually working fine i think it's some error with my system so it is not a platform you can, error you can stop and start your workspace and see if that helps yeah I think I just. I am also starting my workspace as we speak. Okay. I think it's going to take a while. If the data set is not very long, it should not take too long to load it. Uh, yeah, actually, it is something with my system. It get crap sometimes. Mm hmm. Let me just restart it. If you are able to actually uh, go with it, please share the screen so that we can actually go. Yeah. So it is something with my system. Those who have requested the self chat hub account, uh, we are uh, while we are receiving the requests uh, based on your sign up request, we are currently uh, creating your accounts, and very soon you should get your password in the email. I think my net is gone, so that is the reason. Okay. Just a moment. Uh, meanwhile, if someone has any question regarding the uh, conceptually explained, I am just working on this, so they can ask me. They can raise their discussion. I'm just working on this. That's what we'll just do. So, all those who have raised the sign up request. We have created your account, you and your password has been emailed to you. So you can log in and first thing you have to do is check out the marketing analytics pack before you start the workspace. Because once you start the workspace, it won't let you check out the pack. You'll have to stop the workspace to 
to check out the marketing analytics pack. So, Vivek, have you actually able to uh, start with the? Because yeah, I'm. I'm going to that now. My my workspace started here. Let me let me try to run this project. So, uh, honey, hi. This is uh, Prasanna here. Yeah. Uh, hi. So I understand the fact that you know you are looking at uh, calculating the CRV value. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, part of the CRV value calculation. Yeah. What are all the different uh, features that you are taking as part of your machine learning model? And okay. if you can give a brief about, uh, uh, is it like, uh, uh, you know, the previous customer acquisition uh, historic details, as if it's an individual platform, if you can just explain different features that you are considering and how you are classifying the dependent and independent variables. Yeah. yeah. That would help. Actually, thank you so much so if i would have shared the screen by now you uh, so i'm taking the recency so i'm taking the frequency of a customer so let's say from the last uh, data i am able to predict that how many customers are recently buying from me and what is the monetary value they are uh, you know contributed into my services and on the basis of that i am able to predict that what will be the lifetime value of those customers so i will be taking only the customers who i have who have a frequency of one time buying with me or interacting with me for the one time right and the moment i select those cohort who is going to get you uh, who has interacted with me one time i am going to i'm i'm you know taking that cohort and I'm, then i'm predicting for the next frequency the next monetary value they can contribute into my services so let's say i have a you know data of a certain thousands of uh, you know people who have made the transaction who have made the recency and the frequency and they have contributed into the monetary value and then what i did is that on the basis of that information i segment the customers who have just trans who have done the transaction once and then i'm going to predict that what will be the value of those customers who can contribute it to me so see, I as I was talking about the new customers, who will be the new customer? The new customer who will be the person who has first, that will be the first time that has been interacting with you, right? So th on the basis of that, I can predict that if the person has a, done the transaction one time, what will be the future transaction or what will be the future monetary value they can contribute? So I think uh, Vivek was able to uh, share the screen. Yes, I am. I am able to run it also. Yeah. Uh, just give me a minute. I am actually creating some of these accounts. Okay. Yeah, moment. I think Amol. So yeah. Some folks have asked to create their accounts, so I am in the process of doing that right now. Yes, Amol, please. Yeah, so, hello, yeah. uh, just one quick question. So, yeah. So, basically, with one-time interaction, how is it possible to kind of predict? Uh, the likelihood of that user coming in and that is one question and second one is it is more of a b2b kind of or b2c kind of data. see the details it doesn't depend where whether you are you know it let's say you are talking about the b2b but the kind of data set that kind of sample that has shown that i showed you that possess the quantity the frequency of transactions and the unit price or the monetary value the transaction is happening now that customer might be a b2b that customer might be a b2c that 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 doesn't depend but ha huh, it depends upon the fact that what kind of prediction you are going to make so for example if i am saying that you know i have a data set of people who have bought 10 times with me and that person has contributed this much value right i have that history of data set mm -hmm. now a person comes and that that perform a transaction one time and that buy that person bought a, a certain amount of thing a certain amount of monetary value so model is actually trained to predict that for that one time transaction and with that monetary value what kind of contribution that customer can give it to our organization because it has the historical data of how the customers have performed in the past so that is the here whole agenda so if i talk about if you say the automobile industry or uh, the when a person is buying a car so the recency will be very less for sure and the frequency might be so a, a person buying a car will be buying one time and they might not buy another car in 
next four or five years. So that also depend what kind of product and services you are looking upon. So if you are looking upon the subscription kind of services like Netflix, or you are looking upon telecom services, banking services, that is very valuable in that context. But if you are looking about, uh, let's say, mm, uh, I would say in buying property or uh, you know buying uh, something more monetary value. So obviously the frequency is going to be less, and if the frequency is going to be less, then the model, if the model is predicting as well, but that will be no near of the fact that you might be able to give a good after maintenance or after you know customer relationship value for that customers, but still the frequency will remain less. You have to understand that what product or what service you have that you are offering to the customers. Okay, and the sample data, what you guys, to which kind of product it is? Uh, this is this was from the retail one so because of the fact we have abundance of retail data available with us because uh, that is the most uh, you know the most mostly widely available so most of these analysis are performed on the retail data set but i would say that uh, if 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 the time would have permitted i the data set can be from a other segment as well like as i talked about the netflix and as i talked about the subscription based services so clv is one of the important metric that uh, every i would say organization have on their customer inside dashboard so when we perform rfm analysis we have a segment of cal calculated clv we have a segment of how much percentage of acquisition cost we are bearing for you know different kind yeah. of advertisement so that Actually, is very important there only this customer acquisition cost and clv right it matters a lot if my acquisition yes. cost is more and clv I think it is multiplied by something three. I don't remember that exact factor yes. because that won't in the long run help you, right? Acquisition yes. cost more than lifetime value of my customer. Yes. So although I'm performing one workshop for a particular thing and I'm performing here for CLV, I'm performing for RFM analysis. But when I see it as a whole, it is not something that you can only look. You have to only look upon the customer lifetime value. No, you have to create. Something that these are the important metrics I'm talking about. So you have to consider a customer life value, or you have to consider acquisition cost, RFM analysis, and these all actually become a basket of your customer identity, your customer, your ability to take decision, and that's what we take. We talk about data-driven decisions in organizations, and that's how the decisions are made. Even that decisions go around from your finance to your, you know, operations and it's it's a whole loop that the organization operate so i i really hope that my sales strat platform would have worked because that's really uh, i'm not able to figure out why it just stop this if you start restart it should work but meanwhile let me share my screen for me the project ran in uh, less than 30 seconds yeah so actually I'm it's yeah now i think yeah we are able to see the screen thank you so much Shavik. So yes, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, as you have the screen, if you so when in the first step we are importing the libraries, so you can start with the um, running of the project. Yeah. So once you import the important libraries, the next step would be the reading the data set. So we in the next step read the data data set that is present in the that is present in the project, but you can always use it for your own data set. So this is something the head of the data set looked like. Yes, Vivek, you can go forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we start with the data pre-processing. That is, you know, identifying what kind of, uh, what, what different shape we have, what describing that, what are the relevant uh, parameters or attributes we have in the data set. And going forward, can you please uh, scroll down? We also look about finding out the missing values if we are having any. And the one of the most important thing is that you know the date time uh, library that we use the date time function that is to remove the time from the date. So that so how we are actually calculating the frequency from the uh, from the date actually. So how many times the customer have done the transaction with our uh, service or product. And then going forward, we keep the record with the non-negative quantity as well, just to make sure that we are not uh, bearing any negative values. And now what we are doing is on the basis of unit price and on the basis of transactional and quantity the customer has purchased, we are predicting the total sales. So if you see here, we are saying that, you know, 
for each customer id or for a individual customer what are at which at the invoice date what will be the total sales so please go forward and now printing the number of unique customer ids <clears throat> So this way, I know that you know how many unique customer IDs I'm saying. So again, I'm here highlighting the fact that uh, you have to look upon that your unique customers that that are actually in your transactions because those are the customers that might be very moldable at this stage. So going forward, I also can you please? Uh, I just I wanted to just show the customer ID, the invoice date, and the other details. Uh -huh. Then we uh, yes, Prasanna here. So, what yeah. is this lifetime peeping star lifetime? Yeah, so this is the package that you already have in the Python. So, it have different kind of uh, you know this is the library that we install and this have different kind of packages. So, we have gamma gamma model that I recently what I have explained in the PPT that is actually imported from the lifetime package only. So this package you need to install in your uh, project once you are proceeding in predicting the recency, the frequency. So lifetime package contribute all the, those you know uh, functional libraries that you require to perform RFM analysis as well as the lifetime value analysis. So if you see, watch Thank the you. workshop, in that workshop also I use the lifetime package. Thank you. Yeah. So from the lifetime package, I'm importing some of the required function that I might see. So here you are seeing that, you know, in this, I, I don't know where you are able to see my cursor or not, but in the 51th step, you can see that, you know, I'm just interested. I'm just segmenting. I'm refining my customer ID on the basis of their recency and their frequency and their monetary value. Again, see the whole concept and the whole base of this, uh, of the analysis comes on the words on the theory that was given um, you know, that was given that if a customer is recently and very frequently and giving a much higher value of monetary value, that customer is the loyal customer. And that is the customer we are actually, we should focus upon. So that, that theory inbuilt and base this analysis and as well as the RFM analysis. So the, these uh, RFM values, recency, frequency, monetary, are these the baseline uh, sort of for all other marketing analytics uh, analysis? No. So if we see the credit card defaulter path that project that mm -hmm. we have, so that's a very different kind of a okay. prediction that we are doing. Okay. But something, some uh, projects are similar. So for example, RFM and the customer lifetime value. So as I said, the dashboard that we prepare have both the values. So that is the reason the baseline remains the same on the same theory that we, uh, you know, see so uh, in the proceeding project in the proceeding way we are going to actually uh, segment the live customers as well so going forward i just printed the so we printed the frequency so uh, we just now to uh, honey just uh, so the yeah. frequency is a lifetime frequency or is it for the last one year or specific years yeah so frequency is not the lifetime frequency it's depend upon the data set what you have Whatever uh, data set you have, beginning from the date that you are actually, so let's say I have a last two years data set. So in the last two years data set, what is the frequency of that customer, of that okay. unique customer? Okay. Yeah. Going forward, can you please, uh, Vivek? Uh, yeah. So I'm not able to actually see it clearly. So, so can you, I think it start from the beginning. Track. Yeah, it's lost though. So restart kernel, run our cells. Let me just run the whole thing, then you can just explain it. Okay. Are anybody else able to run this? You have checked out the marketing pack. So going forward, uh, we now successfully the whole program is run. See. Yeah, so the program was actually uh, my intern. There is some disruption at my end because of the weather Monday. I don't know. Mm. So, yeah, so then I just wanted to check that you know, just a descriptive analysis what we run about the frequency, mm. and then we proceed with the fact that creating a histogram to find out how many customers purchase item only once. So, here you can see that we are here plotting a histogram 
on the basis of frequency that how many customers purchased item only once yeah. so see as i said if going forward from the lifetime package i import the beta geo filter that is used to actually perform the recency and the frequency analysis and using that so using that i am able to actually fit with the model and then visualizing our frequency and recency metrics can you uh, can you go down please mm. once this is something that i am actually analyzing our our you know how i am able to actually i am going to predict my customer lifetime value yeah we letting down going down so in the next time i am going to predict if the customer sir in the next slot i am going to predict can you just a mm. little bit upward mm. okay. in the next step i am going to predict if the customer are surely at alive because as uh, prasanna highlighted that we are taking the frequency that that for sure but it might happen that you know from the frequency it is showing that the customer has done 10 transaction but the might be the trend transaction might be one year back and one year back after that the customer is not alive it has already switched or they have already switched to some other sub services so this i need to make sure that whatever i am taking the model for training i need to be make sure that the customers are surely alive that i am focusing upon hmm. what is this library of lifetime mentioned over and bgpf created on the top of beta something Sorry? what is this library what is the library lifetime is for the so beta so basically uh, yeah so lifetime uh, library contain all the packages that are mainly focus upon some of the models that are going to perform the you know uh, recency frequency monetary analysis or the predicting the lifetime value or predicting something that is you know relevant to the customer metrics so what i have used the lifetime packages for okay so this is the actually the capability of a machine learning uh, advantage actually that you get a library inbuilt which is uh, which which performs the which performs the complex solving of your problem so in the next time i am going to predict the future transaction in next 10 days that is the top 10 customers that the model expect them to make purchases so what here we are doing that we are actually on the basis of alive customers we are going to take the top 10 customers that the model expects you know what purchases they can make and please go for, uh, down vivek so this is something that we are assessing that how uh, eventually the fitting of the model actually is done down and the customer future transaction prediction for next 10 days is something that i'm interested into the only 10 here i'm taking on the 10 customers that depends upon the fact that how many customers or what is the dashboard you are focusing upon and you want to predict it for and then the next step the customer future transaction prediction for the next 10 days and i want to actually see the monetary and the frequency value right so because of the fact on the on the basis of this only i'm going to predict the customer lifetime value and if you see the shortlisted customer who have at least one repeat purchase with the company i'm taking that customer data and that frequency monetary value to predict the next clv that is the you know training the gamma gamma model in the account of the monetary value can you go down from the lifetime package import the gamma gamma filter that i explained that this is the reason i was actually we are focusing upon the lifetime package because the gamma gamma filter is available here and we need to import that and then i think in the last step you are able to see that you know the relevant customer id and their clv mm -hmm. i think yeah down yeah this is the clv value you are seeing here so this is the customer id that is the frequency you are seeing if you see the recency the monetary value that is ex that is you know calculated the predicted number of transaction the customer is you know is expected to make and the predicted num value that is you know expected from the model and this is the final customer lifetime value the model has predicted for each customer id 
so this is something that you know in the final dashboard if you want to create and if you want to export this data so can you maybe can you uh, show them the data the initial data that was there in the online retail csv so i i i don't think that is yeah yeah it's not opening here i'm going to download it to my computer show it there here it is giving That's a upf why. error yeah it was giving to me as well so, so there yeah. is some encoding issue but let me show it here so if you see the you know the initial data set that we have and you see the value the value we actually generate from this data set so this is something that you know most of the organization have this kind of data set because this is a simple transactional data set that most of the organization have and on the basis of this simple transactional data set you are actually we are actually capable to identify and to predict the life the value the customers possess into different ids so the rfm analysis also have demands this kind of data set and for the customer lifetime value also you will require this kind of data set so that is something that you know this is very raw there is no information there is no valuable insight that you see once you see this data set but once you see the customer lifetime value and the you know rfm analysis you are able to actually see the value that this data set possess or this data set can generate so i'm really uh, thankful for you to actually bearing with all the issues that we had and that was the uh, end of my work so, so apologies uh, for all the disruption honey uh, hi present again okay. so uh, see uh, just to un from an understanding point of view so that uh, you mentioned that you are using this lifetime package yeah and uh, you are mentioning that the gamma gamma algorithm or uh, the formula so is it like a predictive analytics kind of a formula that predicts based on specific uh, data input and it gives a specific uh, output for example you mentioned that uh, you predicted for the next 10 days you know how uh, the people are going to be uh, how, how the people are going to come yes, back exactly yes, so yes is, is that uh, like a formula for doing it can you yes. just explain please how how it is done and uh, in case of uh, you know what kind of a hyper parameters that you are using there for predicting so on and so forth so uh, see if you are um, in the rfm when i say that i want to see the recency frequency monetary of a customers right so that's the data set i am performing a descriptive analysis what i am here doing is i am just segmenting the customers on the basis of their recency their frequency and their monetary value right but once i get into entering the fact that i am actually telling a model on the basis of their recency frequency and monetary value the model taking that as a input from the past and history data set the model is trained to predict the next 10 days or let's say 20 days or let's say you know a month of a value the customers can give to your organization that is something the prediction here is happening so the descriptive analysis ends the where the i i i just perform the fact that i identify the recency frequency and monetary you understand the recency that is my customer is alive the only reason i am much interested into the recency is upon the fact that i want to make sure that my customer is alive and the frequency is that i want to know that my customer is a repeated you know input and the monetary value how much monetary value each customer is contributing so when i input this so imagine it ki you know i have 10 customers and two of them or let's say three of them are my most loyal customers they are giving me higher monetary value input they are very frequent and from the uh, you know words of last 5 years how much contributory monetary value they have contributed agar if i know that this much is the value they have contributed i am my model is able to predict that what will be the next value they can give to me and what will on the on the co mapping of frequency what will be their lifetime value so if i am you know able to making you so if you see the formula you might see it in a very broader way or in a very you know in a very complex way but the formula simply take the function of their expect recent their frequency their monetary value and their expected value of transaction that's what we are predicting here that's what the probability we are making here so you can also you know test it with you know if you have a data set let's say of 
20 years and you can test that whether when I'm predicting from half of the data set the uh, value of their customer or the value monetary value they are input they are providing the input and actually what they are doing it so that is something that I'm interested in too to actually make sure key when I'm putting it into ascending or descending order I'm focusing upon let's say I have 10 customers who are giving maximum lifetime value and I'm able to see that those 10 customers are coming from a Facebook ads or are coming from a Instagram ads or what kind of services they are how they are interacting with me so that is something that you know I know that okay so that is the segment of customers that is the acquisition cost I can bear on that platform so I can bear acquisition cost on Facebook when I'm seeing that most valuable or most high lifetime value customers are coming from the Facebook platform or let's say what these are the customer I want to fo focus upon in the next of my uh, any kind of customer relationship activity so there may be some uh, you know derivation of this formula yes it was but I, I thought yeah. that uh, I might uh, uh, that's okay uh, that's fine yeah. so for the audience I'm saying so there is some more maths uh, how this formula has been derived from the RFM values I guess and the details of the package which is being deployed in this project is is given here in the spec for this package it's called lifetime yes. package huh? yes. so so it has multiple utilities to do lifetime analysis right so there are various yes. things here uh, so we have used only one model there are other models as well uh, similar to a gamma gamma model so mm -hmm. uh, here we are using one but mm -hmm. it can be performed uh, in varied ways mm -hmm. So you are using many utilities from this package, gamma, gamma fitter, that beta, geo fitter, and so on, right? So for different tasks. Yeah. Now you said this is machine learning. So just to clarify, so in this package, we are assuming it's using ML. Yes. I mean, okay. Yeah. So there is no deep neural uh, applications or neural network uh, application here. We are actually focusing upon. But here we are using some of the packages, some of the basic machine learning uh, packages that are available for with us to predict the customer's uh, lifetime value or to predict that whether the customer is going to continue and what kind of valuable input the customer is, you know, uh, will be able to input to mm -hmm. our organization. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I was not actually able to uh, create the or to show the dashboard, but once you merge all these metrics into one dashboard and you tell them the analysis rfm metric the customer acquisition percentage the customer lifetime value it becomes a really insightful decision making uh, uh, you know a utility or a, a way to actually perform the decisions when you want to choose which platform next you want to do your campaign or which platform you want to next want to invest or what are the customers you want to contribute as a promotional? What are the loyal customers? Because RFM analysis only gives you the segment of those customers. But predicting the customer lifetime value all only enhance your understanding about your loyal customers. So, mm -hmm. so these are, I think, one of the main uh, uh, metrics that uh, the organization should focus upon. So, yeah. Can I ask, can I ask one more question? Yes, yeah, Suresh. Uh, so, have you tried any other uh, uh, modules other than this one, lifetime value? Uh, modules as in? This package is another, yeah. The, all the packages are made by me only. So, um, oh, there okay. is a you personality. This package? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, all the packages, the RFM, the personality analysis, the all the other packages are, are actually built my, by me only. So, you can see here that customer complaint classifier is there red card default prediction is there customer lifetime value prediction customer segmentation is there customer personality mm -hmm. analysis is there uh, market basket analysis is there cohort analysis is there so these all metrics are actually important when uh, when you want to analyze how our customer is behaving so it's a very complex thing to actually predict your customer on the basis of only one metric you can't predict your uh, customer behavior you have to support that metric with all other metrics so that you actually make decision that what you want so to do. I got this. Uh, I'm clear on that. Uh, so this yeah. I know I'm an idea of marketing side. But I'm trying to understand is this Python package, right? The lifetime yeah. package. So this was kind of uh, built by you or it's no, no, no. This was not open. built. 
yeah this is open source i'm asking yeah. are there yeah. any similar packages of this lifetime packages which have you tried anything else that's what my point is no i have uh, in my projects i have used the lifetime packages uh, i <laughs> i i might not i'm i'm i have searched other packages but i don't think that some for example some models are done with other packages i think only lifetime packages is really important you to install once you want to uh, proceed with some analysis for like okay. for customer lifetime value i don't think that there is similar package i don't came i didn't came across might be there okay. might be you have to search it very thoroughly okay okay that's what i'm trying to get yeah. thanks thanks yeah thank you so much i guess we can either build our own code yeah the ready made package just like in computer vision and nlp we like to use bert or resnet models for this task uh, marketing lifetime uh, analysis we are using lifetime package so uh, yeah but certainly there is a possibility of building custom code around yeah. all of these concepts yeah i want to say yeah because this is a vast area marketing right different yeah. verticals you might require uh, a different kind of uh, algorithms I, so i think probably what honey was showing make makes sense more from a retail perspective or something uh, right in a b2b or something i don't know i'm generally i'm saying that yeah when well, there is quite a bit of mathematical algos involved before i yeah. saw this i didn't realize realize that marketing analytics will have so much you know statistical or mathematical analysis going on for various things and i think it's a pretty vast area indeed yeah yeah No, it's a pre-packaged lot of things in once. I think people are. I've seen products where people are trying to use simple clustering and all this uh, time mm -hmm. series kind of stuff to do that to achieve the same thing. But I see all these things very much kind of packaged in one place. That's yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for everyone. So if any Thank other you. discussion or any other uh, person want to actually contribute, they can. So, honey, this. Uh, uh so this is a lifetime package is used for rfm and this one yeah but some of the other projects are not using lifetime you said huh? no no i don't i i, I might be no, i'm not sure for the customer personality analysis but uh, might possible they there might be a use of lifetime package but i have to reach it back so just as a quiz for the audience here so uh, if you are a deep learning you know scientist or developer Uh, what uh, new kind of neural network uh, do you think can be deployed for you know customer lifetime analysis if you were to develop it from scratch using a neural network yeah it is a time series data right yes, i think yes. you can use any lstm yes. or even transformer kind of yes, stuff yes 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 it's a time it looks like a time series so if you are a deep learning a passionate person you would use rnn lstm or a transformer technology correct Yeah, but the kind of explainability, what I think, which we can get here, what Hani is showing, you won't get there. You have to kind of uh, dig deep. <laughs> Again, I mean, it will take a yeah. lot of uh, tuning the neural network to get the yeah. required uh, values right. But if there is a huge data, and again, yeah. Yes, Probably yes, like it's, it's very hard to do good time series modeling, right? Yes. Using LSTM or whatever. Yeah. I think the way this package, the way Hani showed, this is very explainable to customers, right? They also ask you on what basis mm -hmm. you are doing it. It clearly right. shows the explainable to the parameters, attributes. That's right. where your machine learning and deep learning will change. Yes. Right? yes. So really, customers ask why. If I go and show to my boss, this one he will really on what basis, right? Here you have very much transparency. With deep learning, this is a big challenge. Yeah, That's it's a you know. it's a black box, correct? Yeah. Once uh, you know, there is always a question. Once I say that uh, you know this segment is the most loyal customers of yours, yeah. the, the next question that arrives is on what basis you are saying exactly, this, exactly. why you are saying this that these are the loyal customers. So we yes. always start with the assumption that if a customer is you know doing this, this, this. then we say that this is a loyal customers for us yeah. and on the basis of that only we proceed further calculating different metrics one one has to make one assumption at the beginning because we can't actually get into the mind of customers that what they are thinking yeah. about our product or services that is something very qualitative and very um cognitive uh, you know in nature so uh, on the basis of that we always proceed with one underlying assumption and then we go forward with using different kind of machine learning or available deep learning as well but in deep learning also when we use the attributes of a customer personality or for a customer from the transactional data or from any kind of data we are doing assumptions choosing those those attributes as well 
because uh, in deep learning also we need to give some input for our customers then only the it is going to predict as uh, but i i think that uh, that is something that as per my understanding uh, up till now there have been very advanced rfm analysis uh, you know mixed method approach uh, market basket analysis but all those analysis are only trying to actually build different different kind of insights and from different kind of segments so yeah that is something my attempt to explain this no it is, it is very good yeah but Thank i always you. with deep learning when i try to use it right i am very challenging to explain to your customer yes yes there is no clarity you again you have to use some other tool to kind of explainability stuff to do that i think machine learning in that way is really of course you should have some domain knowledge then <laughs> yes so uh, yeah i i i think that most of the application uh, when it become digital the only advantage organization have that the customers data flows in and it is in various forms in text in transactional data kind of you know a lot of forms of data comes into the picture and that's give the uh, give the advantage for the organization to use these tools to analyze them so yeah i think uh, that's very important to prepare a dashboard to have that kind of metric selection because when you talk about marketing when we talk about uh, operations there are a lot of metrics you have a lot of metrics that you discuss hits buttons you know and your unique customers uh, so it depends that what metrics you are choosing to look at it is very important yeah rather what is the problem you are looking to solve yeah yes. yeah thank so, you it was good thank you so much um, okay any final questions audience and you are saying something no thank you so much and if any query of any question or any kind of uh, interaction anyone is interested you can find my name into linkedin and uh, i think i will be visible there so if anyone has any uh, input to give they can connect me on linkedin so i will just put my linkedin if uh, just a moment i'll just put the link although i'm really active on linkedin so yeah so I, i we encourage the audience to try the, the other, other other projects in marketing analytics pack there is also a social media analytics pack on sales chat hub uh, so you can explore the other uh, projects which are provided there including uh, you know the the rfm analysis and few others so again i am not able to actually access my linkedin profile i'm sorry but you can find my by my name so it is hani adav uh, doctor scholar uh, iit delhi Uh, so satyajit you i don't know you are here or not but in rfm analysis it was more of a kind of a descriptive statistics but i would not say uh, but yeah it's it's let's not use the word statistics because it's a different domains so it was a different descriptive analysis only thank you so much i think we can end the session now Okay so thanks all for joining thanks a lot honey very interesting discussion on marketing